Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome back to Bariatrics and Beyond, the podcast where we talk about life before, during, and beyond bariatric surgery. So pull up a seat, grab yourself a snack, a drink, because today we have a special guest all the way from Arkansas. You guys will be very familiar with him. He's the man that did the pre-op diet for a million days. Please welcome Chris Roberts. Hi, Chris. Hey, Kayla. How you doing? Good How to are see y'all? you? I'm, I'm fantastic. How are you? No, I'm doing good. good. I'm, I'm doing a lot better. I know that. Good to see ya. So, if people are brand new here and they've never met Chris, um, introduce yourself. Tell everybody who you are, where you're from, what you do, and what you're all about. Well, I'm Chris Roberts. I'm from uh, Arkansas. I'm 45, and uh, I do plumbing. I've been in that for like 21 years now, and uh, you know, I've got five kids and a married. And uh, here lately, you know, it's just been amazing, you know, living my life and the changes that you know has happened to me. And I'm just I'm thankful and excited to be able to get out and enjoy this life. All right. So take us back to the beginning, Chris. So. Where did um like where did it all start from you and and talk us through like have you been overweight your whole life did it was it something that happened later on in life how how was how's life been for you when I I was uh, you know when I was a kid I was uh one of the you know big kids kind of chunky and mm-hmm. you know didn't really do get out there and play sports and stuff and then you know eventually. When I got into around uh, junior high, I wanted to play football. Well, you know, just because I was overweight and stuff, you know, I had messed up my knee, right knee there for a while. And uh, I wasn't able to play football because of my weight. Just wasn't, you know, it was just too heavy for my leg to support. And, you know, eventually, I'm going to say about 2001, I got married. And uh, I was around 325 then. And, you know, after that, you know, after having kids and stuff, eventually I, it got to where my weight was just out of control. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't able to go out and enjoy the things that I wanted to do. And, you know, trying to work, being overweight was just, it's always been a struggle. Mm-hmm. But it was just, it was just so much. I couldn't do get in and out of the ditches and stuff like that. And you know, for being a plumber, you gotta be able to do that. You gotta be able to get down, up and down. You know, mm-hmm. and it's a lot of work. It was a lot of it was a big struggle. Yeah. And well, what was your heaviest? About, my heaviest was six hundred and forty-one pounds. You guys, six hundred and forty-one pounds. So you know, we have. People coming to us having weight loss surgery that, you know, maybe they're 190 pounds, 200 pounds, 300 pounds. You were over 600 pounds. So life at that weight is very different than anybody can even ever imagine. You know, I can't even imagine most people don't at that weight. They don't even get out of bed, Chris. Oh, it got to that point. Mm -hmm. It really did. It got to where, you know, I, I just couldn't get around like if when I went to work you know I was mainly just sitting in a vehicle and just kind of watching you know my dad and my sister and whoever else you know that we had that was working with us you know all I could do is just stay in a vehicle and maybe go pick up something and then you know our supply house would bring out the stuff for me mm-hmm. and it got to where you know I wasn't able to go enjoy to see my kids uh activities or nothing you know and my health, you know, yeah, it got real bad. You know, I ended up with uh, sleep apnea and atrial fibrillation and then mm-hmm. two uh, big clots in my lungs, you know, and it, it just took me down. Mm-hmm. But, you know, now I got to where I was getting cellulitis and I had to go see a urologist and, you know, had to 
wear a cap there most, you know, at least wow. I did about eight years. Wow. You know, and that was a, I just hated wearing a cap there, but mm-hmm. you know, it, it was a lot of ER visits, you know, because of my weight. And doctors would tell me that, you know, I needed to do something mm-hmm. and then, you know, that I was going to die. I mean, that's all I had to hear, you know, and I didn't want to hear it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, at that moment, you wanted to, you feel sorry for yourself. You want to change. But then again, you, you're you just back to where you was at before. Well, like yeah, because you, it's so, you go back to the habit. Yeah, it's so hard to change. Like, if, I, I, you know, I was half of that weight, 300 and almost 50. But like, it just feels like the road ahead is just so far and it's not obtainable. And you don't even know where to start. When living life every day, just because it's just it's hard to exist. Where do you like? Where do you even find the hope to start? You know, people go, "Well, you need to lose weight." Well, no, no crap. Of course, I know this, but you know, walking was hard. So for you, it was when they told you, like, "Oh, you know, this." I heard somewhere you say that you were planning your funeral. Yes, I, w- I was going to meet with a, a funeral director yeah, cool. the day that, you know, the same day that I decided to reach out to ELC. Mm. But, you know, I was going to go pick up my cemetery plot and start making payments. And, you know, because I didn't want my kids, you know, to worry about what happens, you know, what what financial burden am I going to be for them? Mm. So, you know, maybe that's bury me, you know, and. I did. I I had appointment and all, and mm. when I got maybe two miles from the house, I said, "You know what? I need to just cancel out. I need to make a change right now." And that's exactly pumps. what I did. I reached out. Oh, you know, Chris, when, I love that. It was, it was like it was life or death for you. Though, like there was no. Yes, option. it was life or death because yeah. I couldn't get. It. I mean, it was it was bad. I mean, mm. you know, having to have people help me and having to have my kids help me. You mm. know, and. I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't go through bathroom door or nothing like that. Like it was a struggle. I mean, mm-hmm. I couldn't shower, you know, the way I, like a normal person, you know, it's yeah. just, I couldn't stand very long. Yeah. And yeah, it, I hated do it, going to a doctor's appointment. I would cancel out and, you know, either do a telehealth or whatever. I just couldn't do the walk. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. So you decided, you know what? Had you explored weight loss surgery before? Was that ever like an option that crossed your mind? Or like how did thinking about having weight loss surgery come to? I did. I had a couple people that I knew that had went to see Dr. Ortiz, Mm -hmm. you know, and that was in 2000. It was around 2009, 2010. And ever since, you know, I reached out and, you know, I I wanted to try it, but the Support from the family and friends and stuff was at that time was just wasn't there. Mm. Like you know, they would tell me that uh, I had you know they would just it was a scary situation over there and you know and oh, okay. things could happen in Mexico you know mm. and but yeah I've been a, like I was following Doctor Ortiz you know since then you mm. know it's like more of my dreams like I was like. I got to do something because everybody would tell me, you know, the ones that went, they was like, it helped. And mm-hmm. they looked amazing, mm-hmm. you know. And after my, it took so long, you know, and my weight to be so high, my health going down mm-hmm. that, you know, everybody was like, you need to do something. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it's not that easy, Mm-mm. you know. I've tried every weight loss product you can think of. That's what I was going to ask you. Had you tried, like, I know myself, I did. I was on every diet imaginable. Nothing ever stuck. Not that it didn't work. It just nothing was ever sustainable for me. So w- same thing with you, right? Like you tried everything too, huh? I, I've tried everything. Mm. Like, I mean, you named the company and I tried it. Yeah. And, you know, I might have done good for about a month. And then my mind was just like, hey, no, this ain't going to cut it for me, you mm-hmm. know. And I was back to eating and then I gained a whole lot more plus more. what I lost. Yeah, because you know? you're yo-yoing and it's like, yeah, you might lose like weight fast, but then you gain it back and then some. And that's like the vicious cycle that I think everybody yeah. who's had weight issues and been on all these yo-yo diets has, um, you know, has, has encountered. And weight loss surgery, it is 
it's such a savior. Like it is the only thing that has ever worked for me. Same with you, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm. I have to agree. I mean, it it helps. Yeah. And, you know, when I tried to apply for weight loss surgery, I got denied. You yeah. know. Yeah. So, so take us back right. to that. So you you reached out to EOC and you're like, you know what? I it's time that I I'm going to do this, but I need help, and I'm going to explore weight loss well, weight loss surgery. You reached out to EOC. Then what happened? Well, when I reached out to them, you know, uh, did a health questionnaire. And when I heard back from a coordinator, she, you know, they told me that, you know, I got denied because of my BMI was being, you know, being so high. And, you know, 641 pounds, you know, I was like, oh, you know, and I was kind of devastated there for a minute. Mm -hmm. But as I kept reading my email, you know, it didn't, it didn't really hit me as bad as I thought it was going to, but I was upset there for a minute. But as I kept reading, it was like, but there's hope, you know, there, I, I, you know, there's an option for you to get mm-hmm. that weight loss down to get your BMI where it needs to be. Right. Cause what was, was your BMI? What was your BMI when you were applied? It was close to 95. It was close to 95. 95. And the cut off BMI for the gastric sleeve or bypass is 80, 80. So you had to, you know, bring your BMI down, what, like 11 points to even qualify for weight loss surgery. Now, let me go ahead and say this really quickly. Since then, though, um, we have introduced the endoscopic sleeve, which is a fantastic option for people like Chris. Um, You can come and have the endoscopic sleeve, which is where they go through the mouth and then they will suture your stomach um, like that. And then you can, that will help you lose the weight to get to that BMI. But at that time, we didn't have that option for you. We can offer you that. So your only choice was to go do on. the pre Yep, and that's what you did. So talk us through that. Well, you know, at the beginning, I'm going to say the first five days, you know, it wasn't easy. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, but after, I'm going to say around week two, Mm-hmm. That was the easiest process. Like my mind was just like it just like clicked. Like yep. a light just mm-hmm. switched on and my mind was just went on with it. Yeah. You know, I wasn't I got to realizing I wasn't eating or, you know, having the hunger or the cravings for the stuff that I once had. Because mm. you you know, I was that I was actually diagnosed as a food adi- uh, addiction and mm. uh, overeater and binge eater mm-hmm. by a psychiatrist. You know, she was like you know, it, this is your life. You know, mm-hmm. we got to make some changes. Yeah, it was probably but like when your I only source pre-op. of comfort too. Like, it's probably the only thing that brought you like comfort and was just eating because it just brought you like joy because other things in life were just so hard to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, stress would make me go back to mm-hmm. eating. But mm-hmm. something about this pre-op, it just, I mean, Dr. Ortiz recommended me to do it. And, you know, that core, my coordinator reached out. She said, "Hey, I believe in you. You can mm-hmm. do this. You can get that. You can hit this go to mm-hmm. get approved and then reapply." But that's what I've done. I had to get under eighty. I think I have gotten right, right around seventy-eight or so, or mm-hmm. maybe seventy-nine, and I reapplied. Mm-hmm. And I think that put me at five hundred and eighty pounds. That's you know. Wild. But so, and, so how long did it, like you did the pre-op diet when I introduced you, I said you did the pre-op diet for a million days, but how you did the pre-op diet for, was it like 270 something days? How many days did you stick to that pre-op diet to get your BMI down? I, I stuck with that for like 475 Four, days. 400. Oh, that was too, Chris, that's, that's so, that's so admirable. Good for you because you were so determined, but you didn't have another choice. Like we said, it was a life or death at that point. But also... I feel like, like you said, the first week of your pre-op, you know, it was hard. But then the second week, it was like, this is it. Like, it was a switch. But also, I reckon that your body probably was, like, responding to it very well because it was, like, getting all the nourishment. Like, it probably hadn't got for a long time either. You know what I mean? You are probably, like, really nourishing your body and your body was responding to that. Yes, it, it, it was. I mean, it, I mean, it's just like a light switch just clicked on, you know. I yeah. was able to just take it and run with it, mm-hmm. you know, and there's so many times that pre-op got changed up, you know, did, there was yeah. like, it was like, Hey, I got it. I had to hurry up and start changing, yeah. you know, to just keep following up with pre-op. Mm-hmm. And you're, you know, you're a really active member in our Facebook support group. 
And um, during your pre-op, like you, you had like an entire army like with you like every day, like Chris, how you doing? And you'd be checking in. So like, how did that, um, when you started getting like everybody's support online, like how did that, that, that's a lot of pressure. Like you can't let them down. You know what I mean? Like how did that affect uh, your journey as well? Oh, it, having that support was awesome. I mean, Mm. you know, I still have the support, but you know, my good days and my bad, my bad days, you know, they would help me through it. I mean, they, they were there and they kept motivating me to keep pushing forward. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that helps a lot of people, you know, you, you may not have it with family and friends or something like that, but when you go back, you can go to your support group and ask for help. Like they're there, they're a hundred percent there and they, they will help you no matter what. Mm -hmm. And that's what they've done for me. You know, I had bad days. They helped me through it, you know. It, I might have struggled a couple of times during pre-up, you know. I was, they helped me through that. Yeah. And, you know, I have a lot of good, great motivators that, I, you know, that inspire me to keep going. And, you know, there's several guys that, you know, was close to, you know, about where I was at health-wise and, mm-hmm. you know, the appearance of how big we were. You know, that the being with them, that helped me out through this whole process. And, you know, it, hey, it just maybe just say, hey, I'm strong. Let's get this going and yep. stay to it. And that's what I've done. Yeah, I'm so proud of you. So, okay, let's let's rewind you. You hit your BMI requirement. You're now, you now qualify. So you had to reapply for surgery, right? I had to reapply. And when I got approved, you know, no, that was uh yeah like i said i was around 580 pounds mm-hmm. and when i hit that approval i was i was just excited yeah then it was time to start you know hey figuring things out and you know what so, how am i gonna get there and yeah, stuff like that all the logistics of it but you know you did the hard part and everything else is gonna figure itself out so you got that approval. Explain, like, what did you do when you got that email and it said, congratulations, you're approved? Like, what did, what was your reaction? Oh, I was excited. I was making phone calls. Yeah. I was sharing it. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I was telling family and friends. I was like, hey, I hit it. You know, I yeah. got my approval. Dr. Ortiz, uh, you know, approved me for this surgery. And you know what I kept doing? I just thought, until what I felt like was, uh, I wanted to keep doing the Mm pre-up no matter what until I figured out what day I was going to do my surgery. Mm -hmm. And so financially I had to try to, I was trying to, you know, gather it up, Mm -hmm. you know, and I had friends, you know, was trying to help me, you know, figure out ways to get my plane ticket and all that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you had never been on a plane before, right? It's been it's been a, oh, long, a long time. time. Like I was, yeah, I'm gonna say I was probably around eighteen or so yeah. since yeah. I've been on the plane. Yeah, and like you know, then it was like a tight fit. You know, I was having to get two seats really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know how that feels. And, yeah. So okay, yeah. so you're like, all right, I'm approved. I've done this, dude. I've done the diet for so long. I'm at the BMI now. I just need to like financially be able to come up with the money to to have this this life-saving surgery and then um but but at but at this point in time you're on the Facebook group every single day posting and everyone's cheering you on and then as people well, some people might not know about this if you're brand new here but um if you if you are brand new here the thing with EOC and what I love about about Elias Ortiz and company is that this company is so generous and they love to give back um, and several times a year, we give away surgeries. We give away free surgeries. We do, you know, we do we do it in all different ways. Um, usually we online will say, oh, you know, we're going to run A, B, C, or D, and this, you know, this is how you qualify. And, we, you know, we just randomly pick a winner. It's always done by, like, you know, a computer-generated thing. And um, if you qualify, you're, you're entered and that that sort of thing. But this time I feel like it was around, it was the holiday season. And then we thought, oh, you know what? We haven't given away a a surgery in a minute. So what we did, um, we said, we'll do do a different giveaway this time. Let's do, um, 
we'll do a post and you have to tell us why you deserve to have this weight loss surgery. And the one, you know, with the most likes and shares and, and all that fun stuff, it's, it's free surgery. Um, and then you applied that way, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yep, you did. And I was, I was very excited. Yeah, and so was I. And I thought, I thought oh, everyone's going to rally behind Chris because, you know, everyone's followed your story. Um, but then, you know, the internet sometimes is a not so great place because uh, people cheat. You know, and we, we said, you know, we're going to weed out all the cheaters, you know, but people still cheated and then people rallied. And, you know, so it, it kind of it definitely wasn't the best <laughs> way to give away a surgery. We realized that, but you live and you learn, right? But there was, uh, there was other people that had way more likes, but we did do the robot counts and make sure that they didn't, they didn't actually, they were not counted. But there were still people that got more likes than you. And then it came down to, um, then, then, so we, we, I think we did like the top 10 or something, whoever got the most votes. And then it came down to, you know, the board of EOC members and everybody, you know, read and took a vote and stuff. And then somebody else won the surgery and we, we gave it away. How did you feel at that point? Were you like oh, a bit bummed out when we gave the surgery away to someone else? It was like, damn, were you a little bit defeated? Yeah, I was. I was like, I'm a big dog, you know. I, mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I was like, well, there's other ways that I could try. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it may take time for me to, you know, be able to have my surgery. But, yeah, I was pretty much, you know, bummed and thought it was over with, you yeah. know. And but it wasn't. It wasn't over with. So. It was not. It was not. It was not the end for you. Uh, we all rallied behind you behind the scenes and we're like he's done so well he's fought so hard and the team of us fought for you and we have a very very generous very generous fearless leader Michelle right I love you um she was like let's give away another surgery then and then they were like oh, let's do it wow she said we can and then so I was like, hey, Chris, do you want to go on Facebook Live and talk about the pre-op diet? Because there's been some changes and you, you know, just give everyone a bit of a pep talk about the pre-op diet. So I teed you up thinking that you're going to be talking all about the pre-op diet. And then we went on live and I think this, was it like Christmas Eve or something? I feel like it was right around the holidays. Like it was. It was uh, New Year's Eve. Was it New Year's Eve? But like, yeah, I feel like it was like one yeah. of those. Yeah. And then. uh then what happened? Talk, like, explain how it happened. Well, I mean, you know, I, here I, you know, after you told me that it was about pre up, uh, so I done had my notebook and pen, you know, ready to kind of jot <laughs> a couple of things down, you know, for some changes that I probably needed to know. Mm. And I was like, well, after that, you know, hey, I'm going to go to bed. You know, I was planning on going to bed and not celebrate New Year's, mm. you know, just because I felt. Defeated. You know, at the time, I felt like an old man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, hey, I ain't staying up to midnight. I'm going to bed about nine or ten. So, but you know, after I found out that I was given a surgery, you know, my heart like dropped, like mm -hmm. the the shock. I mean, goosebumps and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, the chills. I, I just it just hit. Like, mm -hmm. so on the live, on the live, I did not. Yeah, on the live, I was like. But Chris, uh, we're giving you a free surgery and you're coming and you're having your surgery. And he was just like, what? Like, no way. No way. It was it was like the coolest <laughs> thing ever. It was like such a cool. I was so happy to do I, that. I was. Yeah. I was, was in so tears. Shocked. Yeah. Yeah, you were. And then so from there, it kind of like it happened kind of fairly fast after that. You were like, well, now I need to like I need to get my flights and I need to like get to down to Mexico. And I was like, well. I'm coming with you. <laughs> so I, me and Nicole, um, we met you at San Diego Airport, didn't we? Yes, you did. Yeah, we did. It, it was a real, it was a real shocking surprise. I know that. <laughs> and we got to document <laughs> your whole experience. We so for people who are who are interested, we documented it all on TikTok. Day one, day two, day three. Um, so can you explain all about your experience at EOC from like the minute you stepped off that plane? Like, how was your experience? Well, uh, I mean, it was, you know, I was really surprised, you know, like I said, I was excited to see you and Nicole and, uh, you know, being picked up at San Diego, 
you know, and then Remy. Mm. I mean, he's an awesome driver. He's, Love Remy. he's hilarious. Yep. You know, they're all, all the EOC drivers are hilarious. They're the best. You know, great. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was, it was just felt like a vacation, really. It didn't feel like I was fixing to go have surgery. Mm. Like, you know, I was excited yeah. about, you know, everything that was fixing to happen. And, uh, you know, being able to see San Diego, I ain't never been, you know, mm. I was like, wow, that's a nice place. Yeah. And going, yeah. you know, getting in a van, you know, to go across the border. That was, that was amazing to see, you know, mm. and arriving to the Grand Hotel, you know, that what'd was What did you think about the hotel? Oh, I felt, I, it, it, it was a lot. It's a lot nicer. I'm going to tell you, it's a lot nicer than what I've been here in the U.S. Yeah. Like, you know, five-star hotels, you know, you're like, no way. Not a bad I'm, place I to mean, recover from surgery. <laughs> no. Yeah. You're like, you know, you're like, do I really? Wow. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it, I mean, a hotel is just like, you And know, there's a amazing. casino too. Did you make it down to the casino? I don't think we went in the casino, did we? I didn't go to the casino. But we did make no. it down to the pool deck, didn't we? I did make it to yeah. the pool. Yeah, it, it's a really nice pool it's area. So nice. Yeah, so nice. So you check yep. into um, the hotel for the first night because the first night you stay at the hotel. Um, but first day we went to go get all your blood work and your EKG and all that. How did that, all that go for you? It went really great. Mm. Like it was an easy process. You know, we did some paperwork and, you know, then went and did our EKG and uh, blood work and stuff, mm. and I got a, you know, everything was fine with that, and the, you know, was getting ready for the next morning. And, right. The one thing that I love about that I noticed when I first went was, um, no one made you ever feel like being overweight your whole life. You kind of you always feel like you, you know, you stand out and you you just don't fit in. No one ever made me feel like I was big. No one made me feel like uncomfortable it was just everything was normal and I loved that all the seats were bariatric size friendly like going to get your blood work done you're not trying to like every time I'd see arms on a seat I'd be like oh man but like no these seats are like big enough to get your blood you know you don't you didn't have to like squish into anything it was like all very size friendly once you get there um which I thought was like really cool did you notice that as well I did Mm -hmm. you know and that's another reason why I hated to go to doctor's appointments mm-hmm. and stuff because the seats in the waiting room is mm-hmm. like, you know, I couldn't fit in there. I was mm-hmm. having to sit at the end if I wanted to sit where I was staying, you know, and right. it would kill me just having to just stand really. But. And then people stare at you like, oh, you got three heads or something. You know what I mean? But in Mexico, meds that no, you're no different to anyone else. Your family. Hi, family. Hi, welcome. You just make you feel so comfortable. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, as soon as I stepped in the hotel, I mean, those the staff was like amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they was ready to take my bag already. Yeah. I mean, it's like, wow, you know. And then I went to go check in with the ELC office, you mm-hmm. know, and it's like, what was smile on their face and you know, welcome and stuff. Yeah, you, you know, you can't beat the staff there. No, nah, you cannot. I, 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 yeah, I love it. I told everybody, I'm like, oh, just the best medical experience, medical care, just. Even like the friendliest experience I've had, like people are just so nice. Okay, so first day is done. Um, it was it was exhausting. Like I feel, feel like the first day is kind of like exhausting because you've had like a long travel day, and so um, we just you just went to bed, didn't you? We didn't really do much that night. Just kind of rested up because we had an early ish morning. Um, so the next day it was pack your bags. We're leaving the hotel and it's time to go to the hospital, right? So we get on the um the bus and we. Take, the drivers take us to the hospital, so we check into the hospital. Um, how was your room and everything? Oh, it was amazing. It was really nice. Yeah. Like you know, it was super clean and everything. I, you know, I just couldn't believe how nice the you know the hospital was. Mm-hmm. And you know, the nurses and doctors and stuff. I mean, it's just like amazing. Yeah. You know, they came in and you know checked on me and stuff like that. And yep. Then here came you know doctor where it is. You know, I was like. Really? I'm facing my, you know, he's like my celebrity, celebrity. surgeon, you know, because yeah. I've been following him for a long time. Uh-huh. And, you know, the man that's fixing to, you know, change my life, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I just 
it was just another exciting day when I saw him walk through that door. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So how was that? So when you get into the hospital, you get all set up um, and the nurses, they come and they get you your IVs in, everything's in. And then basically it's just a waiting game till it's your time. And so we're waiting and then all of a sudden Dr. Ortiz comes in. And yeah, like how you were like starstruck, right? I was. Yeah. I was starstruck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you know, it was another thing too that I had to do because, you know, I had atrial fibrillation, you know. Mm-hmm. I needed to, they wanted to just go ahead and make sure that everything was okay with my heart, you know, to verify that, you know, I am, my heart is strong enough. Yep. And, you know, it kind of, I was kind of just like in a shock, you know, kind of worried if I was going to be able to still do it. You know, safety's first. You know, 100%. I understand, mm-hmm. you know, they want to take the extra caution, you mm-hmm. know, even though I had a cardio clearance from my cardiologist, yep. he still, you know, wanted to make sure everything was still good. Yeah. And yeah, you know, the cardiologist, yep. mm-hmm. yes, the cardiologist, he's like, you know, he's like, Hey, you got a good, strong heart. He said, he said, you're good to go. He mm-hmm. said, this weight loss is going to. This surgery is going to be a life changer for you, and your AP is going to—it's going—it's going to it's gonna, it's gonna go. Yep. And you know, he—you know—I was there. And Dr. Ortiz told me he's like, "Yeah, you know, this is going to help your AP. You mm-hmm. know, it's going to help make it go away." And you know, and they're right. You know, right now, you know, I'm not—I hadn't had no issues with my heart anymore, That's and my blood pressure's been great, mm-hmm. and you know, my lab. I'm, you know, I'm really surprised at how much changes, you know, has came mm-hmm. on this. You know, I'm not wearing, I'm not having to deal with capture or no, nothing mm-hmm. like that no more. Just I mean, this is norm- a huge change. Yeah, like you're living like a normal life now. Like you have, you don't have those restrictions and you can do all the things now. Like that's just like you got your life back. Yes, I, I've, I've got a life, you know, it's a lot healthier and. You know, I was struggling about how I was having to walk, you know, mm. now I'm out of the bed, you know, I kind of use a cane, you know, occasionally and I'm, I'm not having to right now. I'm not having to put the weight on mm-hmm. like, like I was before mm-hmm. and this weight loss surgery just like changed my whole life. I mean, and I'm working with the personal trainer right now to, you know, get my left side stronger and, yeah. you know, get away from that. Right now, it's a mind game. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, my mind's telling me I hurt, you know, and not to walk by myself. And there's times I'm able to walk by myself. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine, like, just even out of habit, like, your body's just used to, you know, leaning on that. or You know what I mean? So it's just, it's also, like, untraining your mind of what it's just the habit that it's been in. Okay, so let's just go back a little bit so um surgery went well mexico was fantastic you had such a good time you made friends we had a, we had a ball we documented everything we even documented your surgery we went live when dr ortiz did that so that would have been cool to watch back huh yeah that oh was, yes yeah. It, it was amazing so you know i got i'm so addicted to watching that yeah you know, i keep going back to watch it yeah yeah you know if you wouldn't think a surgery could take 25 minutes Crazy, you huh? know and it it is not gross. I mean, no. it's like it's not a nasty mess or nothing no, like that. I'm like, wow. Yeah, it's not and like And just to see how nasty. big my stomach was, I'm like, made you know, sense, that's, huh? That's crazy. Yeah, it made sense. How yeah, much you could eat. yeah, isn't that crazy? And hey, you know, and how he put, you know, how he uses one of those incisions to get the stomach yeah. out. And I'm like, really? It came through that small a incision, teeny, tiny hole. Yeah, because you guys, when you have the gastric sleeve, you have like just teeny tiny, like four or five laparoscopic holes, and yeah, because I never understood how, like, how do they get it out of that hole? But basically, think about your stomach um, is like kind of like a balloon, right? And then when you deflate a balloon, that's kind of what, like when they, they, they cut that part of the stomach out, it's kind of just plops like a deflated balloon. And then it just, they pull it right out of that incision that's about that big. And it's just kind of, yeah, like a little balloon type thing. So uh, it's really mind blowing how that works. And we actually, if you're here on YouTube at the moment, we have we have live surgeries, so click back through the channel and watch them. They're, they're incredible. Um, so, yeah, everything went perfectly. Like, your surgery was textbook perfect. Everything went perfect. Your time in Mexico was beautiful. Had a good time. Now, how many years post-op are you now, Chris? I am a year and seven months, going mm-hmm. on a year and eight months. 
on the 9th of November. Right. And tell us how much weight you've lost altogether. Uh, as of right now, I lost 307 pounds uh, just from pre-op until now. That's incredible. You're, you're half the size. You're half the person you used to be. Exactly. And, you know, I went from wearing nine-inch clothes, and I'm down to a te- two-inch now. Yeah, tell us about like, that. I've been seeing you in some Hoochie Daddy shorts, Chris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How's that? And, you know, it, it's amazing, you know, that I'm able to wear stuff like that. Because, you know, I hate, I didn't like, I would, I would wear shorts, you know, around the house inside. Mm. But I could you know, it got to where I couldn't find the size that I needed, you yeah. know. Mm-hmm. After I, I don't know, after I went from 300 or something, like in 2001, you know, it just seemed like then I couldn't find clothes that would fit. You know, mm-hmm. it it was a you know where my parents were kind of helping me, you know, try to you know get my clothes when I was you know in the bigger size, mm. and you know just because they're expensive, you know, yeah. and they you know That's you know right. being parents, you know they love and care, and you know you're. It kind of, it was kind of one of them things, you know, really, you know, I can't do it myself and, you know, now I'm not having to worry about wearing those nine inch clothes yeah, or am I eight gonna or find seven. Them? Yeah. I see yeah. you, I see you rocking your EOC hoodie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm you. rocking my EOC hoodie. Did I just you, got that. Did you ever recently. think you'd fit into an EOC hoodie? I did not. And it's a two X. And wow, look at you. Yes. So good, Chris. <laughs> so your life's changed just incredibly all the way around. What's been your favorite non-scale victory, do you think, to this point? My favorite non-scale victory at this point is, you know, being able to get out to enjoy doing things with my kids. Love that. But, you know, now I'm out, you know, I'm helping my parents. I'm back to you know, working hard. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, some people may, hey, you know, that's not uh, a non-scale victory I want, but, you know, for me, it, it feels, I, you know, it feels like I'm, you know, important. Like, yeah. I'm able to do this. You know, yeah. I'm helping my parents out. You know, they're yeah. getting older. And, yeah. You know, and it feels great to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. You know. And, Just help others. But yeah, I'm, I'm doing a lot more, you know, and then I, you know, I used to be the person that would go to the gym, you know, I wasted a, a membership, you know, before my journey. Oh, you know, yeah. I you, donated you, to many gyms in my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I would go in and do 10 fitness. I'll be there for 15 minutes, mm-hmm. you know, to do a trip. And I'm, you know, I'm off. Mm-hmm. And I done, you know, I only went twice and I've done that. The rest of the time, I just let the, membership just you know yep. keep charging my account you know yeah. but donating till yeah. it expires yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. now i'm like loving workouts you mm-hmm. know I, i'm like who is this guy i mean i never liked to work out i never did like exercise no now that you, know? you can move it's, it's exciting to see what you can do and push yourself to the next level to the to different limits like it's it's incredible it's so like movement you know I think a lot of people like, oh, hey, working out. There are always the people that are able to do it. But when you're not able to work out and now you can work out, you actually really appreciate it because you're like, wow, like I'm moving my exactly. body. This feels good because it's, we just, we've never done that before. And and it's almost like, I don't know, I feel like in debt to my body. Like I'm like, I owe you movement. Like I got to keep going because I owe this to you because you were stagnant for so long. So I like, I owe you this, and I love it, and I enjoy it. So I understand where you're coming from. Now, Chris, you even got a tattoo of a dumbbell, right? I did. Tell and us about you that. You know, that, that, that was a great experience to, you know, have. Because, you know, it's something that I wanted. I actually wanted a shirt, you know. I was going to have it made, but, mm-hmm. you know, I went. To uh, meet up with some of my EOC folks and stuff, and we had a great time. And you know, I thought, hey, I'm a. I thought about a tattoo that I want really wanted, mm-hmm. you know, to motivate me. Mm-hmm. What it means is, you know, 
I came out strong yep. and I had my surgery date on, you know, underneath that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's every day I look at that, believe it or not, you know, to ri- remind myself that, hey, I came out from the bottom and I'm rising up to the top. Mm-hmm. And, you know, having that surgery date is, you know, the time that, for, you know, it's forever gone, mm-hmm. you know, for me being that old person that I was. I love that. That is, that is really cool, Chris. So you mentioned you met up with some of your EOC friends. So along this journey, you have made lots of friends and it's not even just online. You've done like meetups with them in your hometown and, and you've even gone to other, like, have you, did you go to Texas or something and you met up with like some people? I, it's so cool. Like it's a whole community and everyone's just become friends. So tell us about those little meetups that you've done with all other past patients. Well, the, the meetups, meetups are, you know, amazing. Like, you know, it, it really helps that we're, you know, having bariatric siblings, you know, mm. and meetups, you know, they they learn, they know your experience and, you know, hey, you don't feel embarrassed, you know, eating very little and stuff like that. Yeah. Learn about their, about their journey, where they were before and how are they able to get around and what changes happen now. Yep. since they had their surgery and you know i did meet quite a bit of people that you know i met one of my inspirations eric you know and i met another one erica you know that everybody that i've met already has inspired me yep. in some sort of way but you know I, I i talked to these people and you know it's just amazing to meet them i mean yeah I never, I didn't have very many friends until Aww. I got into the whole weight, you know, weight loss surgery group. I, love that. I mean, it's like everybody's like friends and like, family. I yeah. was gonna say, like, did you ever imagine that, like, you would have all these real life friends now, like, just from having this surgery? Like, you've you got so many like people in your life that were. The good thing is, like, everyone's been on the journey too, so we all share something really important, but. Could have you ever imagined this would have been your life? No, I didn't. Yeah. I never did imagine that it would be like this, you know, and it's, it's a great feeling to have, yeah. you know, and I, I used to be like a, you know, before my journey, I was like a negative type of person, you mm. know, I didn't really care about anybody but myself mm. or, you know, I was always that grumpy old person, but, you know, ever since. You know, I started pre-op and stuff with ELC, and it's like, you know, it made a whole total turnaround yeah. out of me. Like, it, everything has nothing been positive. I might have had bad days, good days, but, yeah. you know, it's not the thought, the negative thought, you know, of how I was back then. Yep. And it's thoughts. just, yeah, I'm yeah. just a whole different perspective of life now. Yep. You know, I care about others. And, you know, I, I will reach out to help somebody. If, you know, they reached out to me and say, hey, I need help. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So what's what's next for Chris? Well, that I hadn't got it figured out yet. Okay. I mean, there That's is. Fine. That is there is okay. A, there is, thing, you know, things that I have that's crossing my mind, like, you know, I kind of want to go around and like talk to people. I mean, I want to help others, mm-hmm. you know, start their journey or something like that. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I care so much about how EOC changed my life that mm-hmm. I want to go around and talk to people and try to get them to convince to go to EOC that, you know, between the experience I had with the staff, you know, the hospital, the mm-hmm. doctors, drivers, I mean, everybody, you know, it's, it's one of those things you can't beat, you know, yeah. if it, if it's going to, this surgery could change a lot of people's lives. Yep. And, you know, that's just the way I look at it. You know, I want to be that motivator that goes out just to help people. Well, Chris, and, you already are. You do that on the Facebook group daily. Do you not recognize that? Like you do, you motivate people every single day in that group. And people come to you for help and you guide them. So you are, you are doing that already. You are doing that, Chris. 
Uh, I know, and yeah. you know, I do get reminded of that mm-hmm. quite a bit. I think you forget but, that, you know. Yeah. Now, yeah, now yeah. it's like I want to do like some kind of travel type of thing, you know. Right. Like I want to just try to do a, I don't know, like a maiden type of thing. Right, sky's but, the limit. You know, I do. Yeah, yeah. and I, I do plan on trying to do things I never got to do. You know, yeah. I've had and hit my. I've still got quite a work to do. Yep. You know, on my journey. You know, with me being 333 pounds right now, you know, I want to be at least in the 200. Okay. You know, that's my goal. Yeah. You know, just, you know, where I just know that I'm in, you know. Yeah. And you get know what? Like, a lot more. Yeah. Easy peasy. Chris, you've already lost over 300 pounds. You know what I mean? You can kick up that easy. You can do that. Oh, yeah. You know how to do it. You've got all the tools. You've got all the resources. You've got the determination. So I have no doubt that you will get there. Hey, listen, Chris, before we go, are you coming on the EOC cruise? That is a question, a good question. That I ain't going to say yes, and I'm not going to say no. Ooh, to be continued. <laughs> He's leaving That's us cool. hanging. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna, just to be continued, I'm no. leaving you hanging. Oh, God, but you I, got I will, me, Chris. You got me. <laughs> I usually am the one that gets you. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, this. It's, it's highly on my mind to be there, cool. and yeah. so I'm going to leave it at a yes or a no. All right. Well, it's going to be a good time. Have you ever been on a cruise before? I have not. Well, and, there you, you know, go. It's been the first, now that's what I'm saying. Yep. You know, hey, first time with yeah. my surgery with EOC, and then it's going to be a first cruise with EOC. Heck, yeah. you got to do it. I think um, shout out to Eric and Erica. Oh, I actually met them when they were having their surgery, and you were just talking about them. I love them. I'm pretty sure they're coming on the cruise, too. Yes, they, they, I heard that they are yeah. going to be on the cruise. It's going to be a fun bunch. Fun bunch, you guys. If you haven't heard about the EOC cruise, we're doing an EOC cruise reunion. We are going to the Bahamas, baby, for like, I think it's like three days um, in March, I believe. So, um, yeah, if you're interested, let us know. But uh, I think that's all. Chris, do you have any tips for anybody thinking about having weight loss surgery? What would you, what would advice would you give somebody? Well, they don't need to be nervous. Like, mm-hmm. you know, everything's going to be perfect. I mean, the experience is going to be amazing and it's going to be the best thing that they've done for their, for their self. And, you know, it's just like, like I said, you know, it, it was more like a vacation yeah. for me. That's how I felt, me you too. know, and it didn't feel like I was going for a surgery. Yeah. And by the time, you know, we do the tour, you know, I didn't get to do the tour because, you know, I wasn't able to, I hurt, you know, my health Yeah, it was a lot. Stuff, yeah, it was a, it was a, yeah, it was, it was a lot. physically a lot just for you getting around because you were still, you know, had an extra oh, yeah. hundred pounds on you. So it was just even just getting around is hard. So, hey, you got to come back, come back and next time you come back to the tour. That's easy, what I want to do. I, I want to, yeah, I want to at least come back and do the tour, yeah. you know. There you go. So add that, add, add all this to your to do's the cruise, Tijuana, like, yeah, just add it to the list and just keep checking it off. But Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so glad to see you again. I haven't seen you in a minute, actually. We're, we were like a brother and sister, um, bit yeah. my big bro. Uh, so yeah, it's good to see you. Hopefully, I get to see you on the cruise. And um, yeah, thank you for joining us. Cheers. Here. You staying hydrated, I got mine Chris? In here somewhere. All right, all right. There you go. I got it. Yes. It's like tell me your bariatric patient without telling me your bariatric patient. Just take this everywhere you go. But um, it was really good talking with you, Chris. Thank you so much. And then we'll see you on the Facebook group tomorrow, <laughs> today, this afternoon. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, you have a good one, Chris. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. Bye, you guys. Join us next week for another episode of Bariatrics and Beyond. 